Maine College of Art, I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight because Portland is going to be the next hub of fashion in the United States, and we're excited about that. I also want to thank everyone for supporting creativity and for supporting artists who are some of the hardest working people in the world. Just as important, I want to make sure that everybody understands how artists make communities better. And we're excited to have so many great artists in the room today. You're going to see some really great things happen in about a few minutes here. So uh, I'm going to thank some people uh, for supporting this great event. Um, starting with Aaron Hutton. Where's Aaron Hutton at? Who helped put this together back here? Aaron Hutton. We also want to thank some students that work really hard. We have stu two student interns that work on this project with Aaron. Kelsey Weber, where's Kelsey Weber at? Uh, Kelsey Weber worked with Aaron. Rangeley Morton, where's Rangeley Morton at? Rangeley created this set here on the CNC router at Maine College of Art, as well as this bar and the bar in the front. This is a wonderful set here, and it's going to do some things in a minute here that are pretty exciting. So thank you, Rangeley. Where's Jake Michaud at? He's, oh, he's modeling. Jake Michaud actually helped out a lot. He's an intern in the advancement office and Aaron's go-to guy to get everything done. Thanks, Jake. I also want to thank the faculty of the Textile and Fashion Design Program, Jewelry and Metalsmithing, Furniture and Woodworking Design, Sculpture and Printmaking, who provided really great guidance to students and the alumni who participated in this program. Thank you, uh, faculty, for doing all your great work. Thank you very much. I also want to thank all the alumni art artists, models, and volunteers and staff. We had alumni come as far as California to participate in this fashion show. So we're really excited about all the alumni. Now people say Portland's a great town for art. Um, and one of the reasons it's a great town for art, there's a lot of great supporters and sponsors for art. And here are some of all, all of our great sponsors. Brooke there, Debbie Wood Clothiers, Folia, Handstrands, Jim McGowan Incorporated, Luxkin Designs, Rambler's Way, Seawall, South Street Linen and Sea Bags. Run applause for them. <laughs> now our in-kind sponsors, Geary's, Maine Home and Design and Maine Magazine, Maine Mead Works and Plastic Supply. A round of applause for them. <laughs> Other contributors are Encore, Flatbread Pizza, Hairstyling by Jill Ricker, Satoria Salon and Spa, Jessica Levesky, Jenny Mc McEdward, Kristen Gregoria. Also, some very special thanks to all of our patrons and host committee for supporting this event. Raise your hand, patrons and host committee. We need to thank you guys for supporting this event. Thank you very much. Now this whole idea of fa uh, fashion and textile at Maine, Maine College of Art was made possible by Roxanne Quimby. Let's give a round of applause for Roxanne Quimby. <laughs> and tonight we have Dan O'Leary from the uh, Quimby Foundation here supporting us. Thank you, Dan. We also have Roxanne's son, Lucas St. Clair, and his wife, Yumaya. Thank you for coming out and supporting us. I'd also like to introduce quickly Ann Emline, our new faculty member for textile and fashion design. Ann. <laughs> who I'm told meets more people than I do, so. Now finally, before we get started on, with the show, I'd like to introduce uh, my great partner in life, Louise Tusky, who's going to be your MC. Louise Tusky. <laughs> Thanks again for coming out. Thank you, Don. 
This is it. I want to welcome you all to the 2013 Maine College of Art Fashion Show. Maine, four seasons in a day. We begin in the season of fall. In autumn, the trees change to bright orange and yellow. The air becomes crisp and invigorating. Here in Maine, the temperatures range wildly. So fall might find you in a lightweight top and jeans or bundled in a warm wool coat. Either way, you are sure to need some stunning accessories by local artisans. Our first artist, Kat Bates. Barbarian Enterprises, operated by 2009 graduate Kat Bates, is an intimately scaled producer of jewelry and accessories based in Portland. Kat strives to keep as much manufacturing in-house as possible, from braiding many of his own cords to pouring his own sand castings. Durability and comfort are his highest priorities. Model Rana Bates is wearing a limited top along with the token ring, hinge bracelet, token buckle, and token earrings. Model Betsy Lewis is wearing a handmade dress vintage Filene's wool coat, and vintage hat from Encore, along with the thimble necklace, token cuff, and token buckle. All token pieces are sand cast in-house from wooden patterns. The hinge bracelet seamlessly integrates its clasp and opening into layers of brass and steel, while the thimble necklace features an 18 karat gold centerpiece set in a length of hand braided silk cord. <laughs> Next, we have Kelly Fitch and Jeff Waits for One Light Thread. Jeff Waits graduated from the MFA program at Mecca in 2005 and has been a member of Mecca's staff since 2009. He and his wife, Kelly Fitch, are parents of an infectiously funny and mostly happy boy on the autism spectrum. They launched One Light Thread to promote awareness through t-shirt sales that microfund creative therapies for kids with autism. The CDC reports that one in 50 kids is diagnosed with autism. Research reveals that early intervention is key to making a difference. Dan Gardner, Jake Michaud, and Ren Albin are all wearing One Light Thread t-shirts. Jake Michaud is also wearing a baseball cap featuring a One Light Thread design. Donations from tonight's sale of One Light Thread items will benefit Riding to the Top Autism Therapy. These super soft tees are screen printed with water-based inks here in Portland, Mar Maine by Dominic D'Alessio at Arm Factory. These are beautiful t-shirts for a beautiful cause. Let's all go home wearing one. Next, we have the work of Aaron Patrick Decker. Aaron Patrick Decker traveled constantly during childhood, mostly to Alaska. In 2012, upon graduation from Mecca with a degree in metalsmithing and jewelry, Aaron was awarded the Wingate Fellowship, which allowed him to participate as an artist in residence in the Turnoff International Jewelry Symposium in Turnoff, Czech Republic, with the Association of Contemporary Portuguese Jewelers and with the Estonian Academy of Fine Arts. 
Our three models are ready for a fun night on the town. Shayna Natelson is sporting a bow for you, a wood veneer brooch with sand and gemstones. Sarah Hallie Richardson is stunning in an Escada couture dress and the Delilah necklace, a wood and pearl confection. And finally, Lon Cameron models the Daphne, a branch brooch with pearls and topaz. Aaron recently exhibited work at the Richmond Art Center in Richmond, California for Beyond Borders Experimental Enameling. In addition to metalwork, Aaron is a staff writer for Current Obsession magazine as well as for Art Jewelry Forum. And more of his work can be seen at AaronPatrickDecker.com. Now we move to the season of winter. After you've experienced Maine's brilliant leaves, you're ready for winter. Maine has plenty to offer in terms of outdoor activities, not to mention sampling the many fine restaurants the area has to offer. Layers are key to enjoying winter in Maine and the next selection of looks emphasizes just that. Encore. Encore is a vintage clothing and designer resale shop located directly across from Mecca on Congress Street. It's been owned and operated by Rita Prout Farley for over 20 years. Model Marilyn Vanderskaff brings old fashioned elegance back with a velvet Victor Costa dress, a vintage headpiece, and a fur muff from Encore. A look that is sure to keep any of you toasty on a chilly evening in January. Boston Magazine has voted Encore the best vintage clothing shop in New England three years in a row. And Travel and Leisure Magazine has included it on their list of top vintage clothing stores in the world. Many of the vintage hats you see on the runway this evening are generously on loan from Encore. Next, we have the work of Teresa Maria Gannett. Teresa Maria Gannett's jewelry embodies powerful energy. Creating specifically for the female form, she makes singular pieces that encourage the wearer to feel not only beautiful, but strong. This strength is created by the piece, combined energies of maker, wearer, and the piece itself. Model Maureen Emerson is picture perfect in a Zion bustier and J.R. Knight skirt. Her La Première neck piece is fashioned from merino lamb's wool and copper chain and features cabochons by alum Jason Morrissey. The neck piece and set of six copper and silver bangles are from the Demi Perua collection. The La Première neck piece is not only an incredible statement, but it adds a fantastic layer of warmth to any outfit. Teresa allows the process of interpreting her materials to guide her vision. She is informed by Aboriginal endowment, armor, and the natural world, making pieces that speak to the warrior in all women. And now we feature the work of Molly Eliza Vogel. This is model Jess Larner who takes the cocktail party to a new level in a dress by laundry along with the Azuria necklace from the Granules collection and Perfect Studs earrings from the Perfect Pair collection. 2009 graduate Molly Eliza Vogel's designs pull from the human form as well as botany. 
She utilizes these hybrid forms as a way to explore the topic of growth in nature, as well as the human psyche or self. Next up, we have Jill Ricker. Jill is our model who is ready for New Year's Eve in a Jessica McClintock for Gunny Sacks dress. Along with yellow granules, eight solid dangle earrings from the granules collection and a cocktail ring from the Perfect Pair collection. The Azura necklace and yellow granules earrings are jet sterling and fine silver, vitreous enamel. The Perfect Studs earrings and the cocktail ring are fashioned from jet and sterling silver. All of Molly's work is hand carved and fabricated. To view Molly's full portfolio, visit mollyvogel.com. Next, the work of Nicole Warren. Nicole Warren earned her BFA in metalsmithing and jewelry from Maine College of Art in 2012. Although she has a technical background in metalsmithing, Nicole considers herself a multidisciplinary artist working in plastic, found objects, and animal skins. Model Natasha Jimenez is simply lovely in a BCBG Max Azria dress paired with a satin-lined fur stole made with 110 lab mouse skins. <laughs> Nicole has recently exhibited work in Highlands, North Carolina, at American Craft Today, and in the other side of Shade at Maine College of Art. Next, the work of Molly Mrazinski. Molly Marinsky is a textile artist living and working in Oakland, California. She earned her BFA in painting from the Maine College of Art in 2004 and studied fibers at the Maryland Institute of Art. In 2011, she completed a residency at the Quimby Colony. Dietlin Vanderskaff is modeling neckwear number two. This elegant piece wraps around the neck in a shapely fashion and gives you a rest, assisting with the weight of your head. It is constructed out of methodically placed scrap material with a magnetic closure. Model Vivian Ewing has paired a raucous dress with a single pelt vest number two. These elegant sheepskin vests are made from Robin Lind of Meridian Jacobs' beautiful sheep. Each vest utilizes the material restriction Each of those vests utilizes the material restriction of one hide while drawing inspiration from the animal for design decisions. And due to the uniqueness of each animal, vests are one of a kind. So you can see additional work at mollyrosinski.com. Now we move to spring. While it's true that spring heralds mud season here in Maine, it also brings with it longer hours of sunlight, maturing buds on trees, the first hints of color, and the return of many birds and insects. The next several looks highlight animals, electricity, color, and form, singling new beginnings as the snow recedes. The work of Phoenix Zelik. Phoenix Zelik graduated from Mecca in 2006 with a degree in illustration, wearing a handmade outfit involving a lot of orange and glitter, which should have been a clue. She now lives in the Bay Area, where she works as an artist and fashion designer. She believes clothes are alchemy, but also that fashion should be fun and that the best outfits are shiny ones. 
Tonight, Phoenix Zellick is modeling her fawn costume. The fawn costume includes boots, structured pants, corset top, and a horned headdress. Phoenix has a line of complete costumes ranging from Snow White to Atlantis. And you can see more of her work at beastwares.com. Beastwares.com, write that down. <laughs> Next, we have the wonderful work of Maria Wolf. For the fashion show, alum Maria Wolf has incorporated the use of light with varying traditional and non-traditional jewelry making materials to create ethereal objects of adornment. While she primarily makes jewelry with butterfly wings that embody their own natural light play and magic, Maria thought to challenge her work by using micro lighting applications that carry a similar magic. Using recognizable shapes from nature, her pieces appear to be animated from within and from another world. Carly Cook is modeling a BF basic sequin gown paired with the spring flowers neck piece and underworld ring. And model Charles Key is sporting the spring flower brooch. All three of these pieces incorporate sterling silver, copper, LED light with batteries, synthetic hair, carved resin, and silk to create one-of-a-kind looks. And Maria Wolf's work is on display at Folia Jewelry and can be found online at mwolfjewelry.com. Now we have the work of Stephanie Briggs. Alumni and former faculty member, Stephanie Briggs is a luxury jeweler creating one-of-a-kind and bespoke jewelry that transforms into intimate objects of engagement. Current student Chloe Bevan is the picture of elegance in a Melinda Eng ensemble complete with Passati parasol and vintage fur neck piece. Her Sonata earrings by Stephanie Briggs are sculpted 18 karat gold chandeliers with bouquets of florets dancing with faceted rainbow moonstone, briolettes, and tanzanite beads. Model Adriana Warner rocks a London Times dress with a mermaid necklace, a collaboration by Stephanie Briggs and senior Courtney Klimowitz. They designed this during Courtney's internship in Stephanie's studio this semester, featuring a fan coral cast in silver enamel, a silver collar, floral elements, a pearl, and gemstone drops. This piece has an innovative closing mechanism and can be adjusted to sit perfectly on the wearer. an exquisite Stephanie Briggs creation. This neck piece features an 18 and 22 karat gold sculpted filigree set with a faceted orange tourmaline and a rainbow moonstone cabochon. It's finished with a faceted moonstone and integrated signature chain. It's gorgeous. Next, we have the work of Courtney Klimowitz. 
Courtney Klimowitz came to Portland from Chicago, Illinois in 2010 to pursue a career in art. She will graduate from Maine College of Art in May with a BFA in metalsmithing and jewelry. Julie Smith models an Oleg Cassini dress and handmade cape decorated with red and pink and orange brooches from the Mushroom series by Courtney Klimowitz. Model Courtney Klimowitz is picture perfect in a vintage cocktail dress with a hand wrought metal flower bouquet. <laughs> Courtney's dedication to acquiring a thorough technical understanding of enameling has allowed her to push the technique in new directions. This process has given her a way to get the instant gratification she craves while expressing herself through color. And additional work can be found at CourtneyKlimowitz.com. Victor Silva. Victor Silva is a current student who seeks to create unique and exciting work. With an eye for detail and a focus on quality, he recognizes value in reusing and repurposing materials. Danielle de Sessa is modeling the Druidity headdress, a tribute to the silent and dark beauty of death. Using trimmed feathers, animal bones, and other natural elements, this headdress celebrates mortality as the great link between all living things. The fox skull clasp joins wolf fur around the shoulders to create a warm, functional cloak. Victor's t-shirts and hats can be found locally and on Etsy under the name Wildfire Clothing. Next, the work of Shannon McCracken Barber. A 1996 graduate of Mecca's metalsmithing and jewelry department, Shannon McCracken Barber meanders the line between mainstream ornamentation and fantastical creations. Her interest in science fiction and mythology is visible in her costumes. Shannon enjoys pushing the envelope of wearability and function by creating large horns that are deceptively lightweight. Model Molly Hunt is wearing a Diane von Fustenberg dress with green opal Goen stag horns by Shannon McCracken Barber. At just over four inches tall, these horns are not hollow, but they aren't heavy either. More of Shannon's horns, such as Be Wary of Aries, Fantastic, and Gnarly Warhol, can be seen at gypsyroses.org. And now the work of Michelle Roberts, a 1994 jewelry and metalsmithing major. Michelle Roberts is inspired by materials, motivated by an intrinsic drive to make wearable objects, and committed to designing affordable accessories that breathe, breathe new life into any outfit. Student Shannon Owen is dressed for a spring party in a J. Harris dress. Her reversible Michelle Roberts shrug is lined with fleece to ward off any sudden spring shifts in temperature, while her knitted cuffs and felted earrings add a festive element to her look. Model Margot Lee has paired a handmade jumpsuit with a Michelle Roberts butterfly silk shrug, felted wool ball necklaces, and felted earrings. Michelle shrugs glam up the most basic jumpsuit or make an excellent layer you can drop at a moment's notice to reveal your sassy dress. And her knitted cuffs, tube necklaces, and felted earrings offer cozy, lightweight, and colorful additions to any outfit.
And now we move into summer. Summer in Maine is the time to garden and grill. We're all ready for this. To plan a lobster bake or a wedding. The quintessential time for celebrations. This too short season requires many party outfits. The next several models offer a range of summer looks with a focus on lightweight and light colored fabrics that flow and drape. The work of Alan West. Alan West graduated from Mecca in 2010 with a BFA in new media and is currently working as a designer, developer, editor, and studio assistant in Portland, Maine. Model Beth Schneider is wearing dress number two. Model Erica Gammon is in dress number three. And model Harmony Rush is in dress number four, all by Alan West. All three of his dresses feature superficial electric components that might remind one of bioluminescence and fireflies. The work of Kendra Haskell Sweet. 1989 alum Kendra Haskell Sweet designs a line of clothing under the name Whimsy. Each Whimsy item is created with the idea that a lively collection of color, pattern, and shape enhances our joyful expression of ourselves. Natural fibers, including cotton, linen, silk, and wool, are her favorite materials to work with. For Kendra, seams and wrinkles are an integral part of the design. Her cotton and wool collections are inspired by playful combinations of color and design. Model Christina Buckley's look combines the interplay of shadow and fog. Two skirts are worn together and wrapped with a handmade silk scarf to create the effect of a bandeau top. The silk collection is all about layering. Skirts are gently pre-washed to reveal texture. And then layered upon each other and wrapped with additional silk. The silk and linen collections are inspired by the subtle colors of fog the patina of age, and vintage treasures. Next, the work of Kelly Brophy. Model Sarah Harrington is fit to dine in the lobster parlor by alum Kelly Brophy. A reinterpretation of the most iconic of Maine images, Kelly's ensemble speaks to the resilience of those who choose to call Maine home. Featuring a bateau neckline and back cowl, the gown's form embraces the natural beauty of draped velvet, which sweeps into a flourish of scalloped chiffon and delicate beading. Strips of ashwood were bent to form the framework of an arching bustle and then interwoven with netting, recalling the lobster pots that fill Maine's harbors. Hand-beaded fingerless gloves The gloves are encrusted with barnacles of rhinestones, stones, and beads, and they bind her hands in blue satin and encapsulate the dichotomy of entrapment and beauty. A little more on Kelly. She's a, a designer living on the coast of Maine. She studied at the Fashion Institute of Technology as well as at Maine College of Art. She currently works at a design firm in Yarmouth, Maine. Next, the work of Colleen Kinsella. In addition to numerous exhibitions, including Mecca's 2012 faculty show, The World Over, and a solo exhibition of prints in Athens, Greece, Colleen Kinsella's work was selected for the 2011 Biennial at the Portland Museum of Art. 
Model Shayna Blumert is gorgeous in Persephone's Child, an upcycled J. Crew dress. This piece was created entirely while watching D.H. Lawrence films. The multiple layers of hand dyeing and screen printed images of vegetation and Virgin Marys suggest a watery romantic stroll in the rain. Walking with Shayna is Colleen's daughter, Quinisa. Quinisa is wearing silk and lace sheath with an empire waist made from a vintage 70s wedding train by Molly Angie of Boom Chicka Boom that has been screen printed and dyed by Colleen. Colleen has served as the printmaking department technician at Mecca since 2000, and she's recently begun teaching undergraduate print classes. And I know that was very exciting, but now we move to an even more exciting part of our evening as we look at our student work. <clears throat> we are presenting the work by students in their inaugural semester in the textile and fashion design program at Mecca. The creations debuting this evening were designed and created in either introduction to apparel or machine knitting techniques. The intro to apparel class, students worked with rectangles, squares, triangles, and circles, learning how to design and sew patterns to create imaginative and interesting garments. Students in machine knitting techniques grasped a wide variety of knitted structures, pattern drafting for knitted garments, and garment construction techniques while mastering the intricacies of the manual knitting machine itself. Kate Harnden is modeling Kelsey Haley's wrap circle skirt, embellished with hand-painted and stitched fabric flowers as well as a knitted tank top. Model Haley Littlefield is wearing Kate Harnden's hand felted circle skirt with Kelsey Haley's hand felted neck piece. Model Ilana Sternick is lovely in Haley Littlefield's dress which was inspired by an assignment to create a garment using only rectangles and triangles. Natalie Jones is modeling freshman Emily Kerner's final project for machine knitting techniques class. Emily designed and knitted this garment based on her minerals collected with her grandfather. Her necklace was made by Ezekiel Rodriguez. Thank you. Next, we have model Jess Mary Cruzel is wearing freshman Danielle Runyon's tutu dress designed using one circle, one rectangle, and lots of tool. Inspired by Alexander McQueen. Senior Kate Lazat models her own jacket inspired by Russian fashion, created of one circle and a few handy rectangles. Modeled by Rose Porter, Garrett Radcliffe based his assignment to use triangles and rectangles on silence, mystery, and fantasy. Necklace created by Ezekiel Rodriguez strictly for Garrett's fantasy fashions. And finally, Molly McDermott is wearing a garment by freshman Michael Logren, who used safety pins to create his 1,000 Things assignment for 3D design. <laughs> 
Modeled by Melissa Bateau, Mason Haney's peplum dress was inspired by contemporary African textiles. Susie Kanega is modeling her playful, whimsical circle skirt, which is meant to evoke a sense of fun. Crayons, candy stores, and kids. Freshman Allison Bonin models her nod to the quintessential nautical sweater, whose pattern was inspired by Maine buoys. Mason Haney models his own creation, a linen and leather shirt complete with hidden button placket. The tote bag is also one of Mason's own constructions. Thank you. Inspired by her deep love for her grandmother, student Rose Allard models her own knitted skirt, tank top, and scarf as a tribute to all her grandmother has taught her about Lapland and her Finnish heritage. Painting major Tamiqua Nixon models her own creation a sweater designed and knitted with love in the style and flair of her great Aunt Emma. Design wizard freshman Emily Kerner models her first ever machine knitted garment based solely on rectangles in colors inspired by exotic sea creatures. And that concludes the runway portion of our evening. John Tuska again, president of Maine College of Art. Uh, where, else, where else in Portland, Maine can you make a lobster look sexy and interesting? <laughs> what did I say about Portland and fashion? I think it really showed today, tonight, in terms of uh, fashion. Can we have the alumni artists stand? We want to recognize all the alumni artists. Will you stand? We recognize all the alumni coming out and supporting Maine College of Art. Can I have all the trustees of Maine College of Art stand so we could recognize you? Trustees at Maine College of Art. Thank you very much. Can we have Ann Emline stand up with her students? Where's Ann's, where's Ann's students at? I, I want to thank. Here, students, come on out here, and students, come on out. I want to thank uh, the ICA and Daniel Fuller for helping us out with your space. Uh, headlight lighting and Todd Richard right back here for sound and lighting. Uh, Mecca faculty and staff again, thanks for all your great support. Aaron Hutton and Dietlin Vanderskaff, where's Dietlin at?
Now, you see some more uh, great fashion on the walls. There's more fashion in the, in the Hunt Gallery to purchase. So let's uh, move on to purchasing and some more drinks. Thanks again for coming out. And remember, fashion in Portland, Maine.